Welcome back, everybody, to the Pokemon Mid-Season Showdown, and we are about to get into the Swiss Round 4, and we've been having some very, very fun matches so far. It has been an exciting first few rounds of Pokemon. We've seen some creative teams, some exciting usage of those teams, and the true star of the show this whole tournament has been Ogre Pond. Yeah, Ogre Pond has been so strong. The Follow Me... Just ignoring the rest of the moveset, Follow Me has just been so strong on its own throughout. And then Ogre Pond, on top of that, very strong Pokemon. Spiky Shield, very good. It's Protect, but has physical coverage. A little bit of bounce back there. And then you also have the Ivy Cudgel for that extra type coverage if you want to run some different masks. Yeah, the Ivy Cudgel, you get, you get that stab move there, depending on its type. We've seen all four types of Ogre Pond today. I, we haven't really seen much of the Water Ogre Pond. I'm sure we'll see that much going forward into our top cut there. But the rest of the Ogre Ponds do have their niche. Yeah, the fire boosting the attack. And we even saw Cornerstone Ogre Pond a little bit on the team. We didn't see it Terra, but, you know, it just had that little bit of extra type coverage that you kind of need because you're a little bit starved for rock types in this meta, if you really think about it. You have Glimora, which is a good pick, but you also have Hisuian Arcanine. But other than that, your rock type picks are a little bit slim. Yeah, it will be interesting to see. As we do get our team sheets for our next matchup here, we have Jeffrey Yang versus Charles Moses. Yeah, this is looking to be the teams gonna, that are gonna, we're going to be seeing next. And as I was saying, there's a Glimora on the side of Charles. Let's just run through the teams. Just do a brief overview. And we'll analyze a little bit further. Yeah, so from Charles here, we are seeing Glimora, Chi Yu, Urshifu, Single Strike. We're seeing that Flutter Main that we haven't really there seen much go. today. There's that Water Ogre Pond, that there Wellspring, and we're seeing the Tornadus Incarnate, which has been on quite a few teams today, but we've never seen it be used and brought to the battle. Yeah, maybe it's, yeah, maybe we'll finally see that come out, see those bleak wind storms come out. The risky plays are always fun to see. And yeah. Look over at Jeffrey Yang's list. On Jeffrey Yang's side of the bolt here, we have that Raging Bolts, we have the Hisuian Arcanine, that Landorus Incarnate, the Ogre Pond Wellspring. And there's that Ice-type duo of Alola Ninetales and Articuno. Yeah, they're going to be going for that tanky Ice-type pairing once again, while also having a lot of good typical coverage, which is that Raging Bolt and Landorus as well. Yeah, Arcanine Hisuing is an interesting pick, especially with the Terra Ghost. Yeah, the Terra Ghost is interesting because really Hisuian and Arcanine got, took that Rock-type or that Fire-type Terra to really boost its attack damage. But you're seeing it instead of Incineroar. Which really, soon Arcanine, like five in a row, a regional champion before Arcanine came back, or before Incineroar came back into the format. Yeah. But we did see it picked up the win on the Articuno team. It does provide that rock typing, it does provide that fire typing, that bit better damage than Incineroar can deal with. So maybe that's the key here for this team to work well. And speaking of, you know, some classic picks, we're seeing the Chi Yu there with the choice specs and overheat. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since we've seen Chi Yu be useful. Mm -hmm. Chi was really good at the start in the B or C formats where there really wasn't a ton of super strong fire types. Mm -hmm. So we saw Chi Yu pick up a few wins here or there. Now we have Incineroar, we have, we have the Hearthflame Ogre Pond, we have all these strong fire types that Chi Yu has sort of fallen off a bit. But it's always have that space to come back into the battle. Yeah, but on this specific matchup, I feel like Chi Yu is going to be very, very strong. Just as that Ducklet is going to be very, very strong there. A little plush. It's going to be out of frame now. But as we see our players, this is going to be Charles and Moses here on the left. And it's going to be Jeffrey Yang over on the right. You know, you always have those little bit of tournament nerves, you know, as you get higher, higher points in here, you want to make the cut here. Yeah. It's going to be tough. And there's Jeffrey Yang. Going to be bringing out, I'd say, a little bit more on the edge of the meta kind of team. Oh, for sure. I think, I think this team from Charles here is a lot more standard. You see a lot more standard picks. But I like that Glamora here. I mean... Looking at this Articuno team, you do not want to face a really strong rock type, and Glamora will put a ton of pressure on with Meteor Bolt there. Yeah, the, I feel like Charles has a lot that can counter out Jeffrey Yang, and I don't know 
what Jeffrey has to answer. I guess the Landris would be the one you want to counter it out with. Maybe the Raging Bolt, but I think Chi Yu and Glamora will do a lot to shut down this Articuno ice type matchup. Yeah, I think we'll see Landris. I definitely think we'll see Ogre Pond maybe in the back here. If he do if he chooses to lead with Ninetales and Articuno, I would be shocked if Ogre Pond isn't coming along here to deal with those rocks, those fire types. Maybe help deal with Tornadus there as well. There's there's a lot of interesting play on these teams, and so we'll have to see what goes out. Yeah, Will we see Fluttermane finally for the first time <laughs> in this event? We have not seen Fluttermane, I think Fluttermane today. I think there's a very high chance we're going to see Fluttermane, at least for the first round. I think this has the highest chance of going to a Game 3 out of all of them, because these are two very competitive teams. May not. We could still see another 2-0, but I have a feeling this one's going to go... The, the long way here because they're going to get a feel for each other. I think the first start, the first round, going to be very typical. We're going to see Flutterman come out. Just start off strong and try and get this win in here. Get the first win. Yeah, this is an interesting Flutterman set. We're seeing Dazzling Gleam, Shadow Ball, and Icy, Icy Wind. Sometimes you've been seeing Moonblast instead of that Protect, really just to do that damage because really Flutterman isn't going to last many attacks. It, if it gets hit by a physical move, it's going to gonna get KO'd. Yeah, it has a tough time getting out there. But one other thing I want to point out, I'm just looking at the Terra types. I don't see anything out of the ordinary aside from the Terra Steel Tornadus and maybe the Grass Glamora. Yeah, I think you're seeing that Terra Steel Tornadus to really block the powerful electric type moves, block those maybe powerful rock type moves going to the steel type mode. Maybe counter fairy, but he doesn't actually know. He has no offensive Steel no, moves. but it, it playing it more defensive. As we get into a battle here, we are seeing Ogre Pond and Glamora off the lead against Arcanine and Ogre Pond. So that double Ogre Pond pairing up here. That Glamora very scary to lead out there. That is a uh, very scary for Glamora, and not great for the Ogre Ponds either. But it's good on one side. Going to be very effective against that Arcanine, but overall. This Glamora probably wants to get out of here. If it's going to die, it really wants to get hit by a physical move, which I think has a high likelihood. Yeah. We're also really seeing that we saw Flutter Me in the back here. I did not check with the other. There's the follow me. There it is. We've been seeing it so much so today. What are going to get? Really, that Arcanine isn't going to do much. The Horn Leech will do a fair bit. There it is. There's the, There's rock, the rock slide. slide. And it takes him down decently low. That Ogre Pond still Sets alive. Sets up that first wave of toxic debris, though. It's gonna be pretty There's nice. the meteor beam. Look at that. And with the white herb, this is gonna hurt here. Gets that special ways. attack boost, the power herb into the Arcanine. It and gets the shot. KO. That is a great start for Charles Moses. Now he's up in Pokemon. But with his Ogre Pond not doing too hot, this is looking to be a very interesting match. Yeah, that plus one from that Glamora, you really got to deal with it really quickly now. It's set up. It is going to start doing damage. You need to find a way. Take it out as fast as you can now. We shall see. Jeffrey has his work cut out for him here for his choice to make. Don't know what mods he chose to bring in here. So it's going to be the Arcticuno. Arcticuno is coming out. But against the Glamora, it's going to be tough. But at least the White Herb has been eaten. Yeah, there's the follow me. Going for the Sludge Bomb. Into the Articuno. The Articuno will still get hit pretty hard by that Sludge Bomb. And because he also doesn't have the Snow Up, Articuno still could be a little bit squishy so far. Especially without his teammate there, the Ninetales, back yeah. him up. We do see Charles maybe thinking about the Horn Leech. Sticking with the Follow Me. Fine with losing Ogre Pond here. Yeah, you definitely want Glomora to stick around as long as you can. It's going to be your ace in the hole. I'm going to sludge bomb into the Ogre Pond, try and get that knockout. Gets the follow me. It is. What is a Jeffrey No Yang switch pick, from Jeffrey. The Horn Leech. That's going to take him out. Takes out the Ogre Pond. Crit and an insult to injury. Ogre Pond is going to be taken out of the game. Now the Articuno. The next one to move is going to Ice Beam the Glamora. It's going to take him the down. the knockout. Wow, I did not think that knockout was there goes to show how strong Articuno is. And now, this is the last two mons on the side of Charles come out. Fluttermane and Chi Yu. He still has terrestrialization on his side. 
We do, yeah, we do have that Terra. I wouldn't be shocked if we see, uh, we could see Terra Ghost or Terra Fairy. I'm not sure which one you want. Neither of them really, you go for the Terra Fairy if you want an offensive. Gets the Protosynthesis. Fastest thing on the field is probably this Flutterman at this point. Yeah, we're gonna see the Terra Fairy come out. Go for the full on assault here, like you said, and Chiyo gonna be another offensive nuke coming forward. Yeah, we have the Choice Specs Heat Wave here. That's gonna do a ton of damage. Especially with the sun up. Just remember that Beats oh, wait, of Ruin no, lowering the special defense stat of all Pokemon on the field so that Chiyu hits even harder. That is gonna be very, very tough. There's the Terra Fairy. So strong it slows down the screen, but hey, we know it's coming. It's gonna be one of the strongest moves in the game right now. It's gonna be a dazzling gleam, but we're gonna see, see a Terra Terry. be answered. Which is it gonna be? Wellspring. That's what this move, I don't hate. You're gonna fully resist that fire type attack from Chi Yu. Gonna fully resist that heat wave. There Probably it is. not gonna take a lot of damage from it anymore. Oh, is it special defense There's boost. Dazzling Gleam. Let's see it. There it goes off, and it doesn't take anybody out. There's the Ivy Cudgel coming out from Ogre Pond. Does it take out the Chi Yu in time before the overheat comes out? It there it does. is! And now, just on a dime, Jeffrey Yang, once his Articuno has been out on the field, it has just flipped the script completely, and the Flutter main, being so squishy, is probably gonna go down next turn. I mean, once again, we see this Chi Yu be this, un or not the Chi Yu, we see the Ogre Pond be this unstoppable monster that really, it's whoever is playing it better has pulled out the win every time. Just look at this, the Ivy Cudgel is going to be the one to seal the deal. Just like Ogre Pond seems to be the one to seal the deal in all these games. Yeah, Ogre Pond has been such a dominant Pokemon today, and we really have to see what people are going to do to counter it. Jeffrey picks up the first win there pretty handily, only losing one of his Pokemon. He takes it by the <laughs> Sun Chips. Hey, not running a Sun team, unfortunately, to match the chips, but hey. He's pretty cool because he's running the ice team. Uh, Chad is asking <laughs> if there was Aurora Veil up. There was no Aurora Veil up. No. That was just Articuno's pure bulk right there. And one thing I want to talk about is what do you bring to counter that Ogre Pond? Like you said, do you maybe bring a bug type? Because grass is the only consistent, but then if it's Ogre Pond fire, bug does not really become a counter there. Yeah. I think I think if you're Jeff, I think if you're Charles here, you need to look at that Tornadus. I think that Tornadus is your key here. It's a little bit more of a support mom, but really you need that Bleak Wind Storm. You don't have any Electro type attacks, or you gotta hope that your Ogre Pond can live and take it out with Horn Leech. Yeah, I think the unfortunate thing is he just used Ogre Pond less as a tool, but more just a sandbag with the Follow Me to try and take the heat off Glamora. When really, I think Glamour should have been there to absorb a couple more hit, hit, uh, hits, lay down a few more spikes, maybe be in a better position, but I don't know. Yeah, the other the other question here is because Articuno is a flying type, it's not going to be affected by those, those toxic That's spikes true. when it switches in. So really, how good is that toxic debris stat, strat on the Articuno here? Yeah, it's a tough scenario for Charles. He doesn't have all too much to do with these flying types. Like you said, no electricity. He has Glamora with the rocks. So we are seeing that Tornadus come in and that Glamora along with the Ninetales and Raging Bolt. First time we've seen Raging Bolt today. Yeah, that's a surprise to be sure. But it's going to be very strong, especially against this Tornadus. Yeah, I don't even know. terror you... the Tornadus to try and take some heat off. Do you leave that Tornadus up, try and get that Tailwind, but probably be fine with losing it? Or do you keep it in, hope that maybe the Raging Bolt is going to go for that Thunderclap for that priority move? Yeah, there's so many questions up in the air, and it'll be answered soon enough. Maybe we'll have even more questions. There's the helping hand on the Raging Bolt. Going for the Tailwind. It, goes it did not go for Thunderclap. We would have seen Thunderclap activate already. And there's a Meteor there's the Beam. Meteor Beam. That could pick up the, the KO on the Ninetales. We should. It's going to be very close. Can we close? Nine Tails is pretty bulky, but that's a plus one meteor beam. There it is. Not enough. Does not live. Maybe with that Aurora Veil up, but I have to assume that Jeffrey was fine with losing Nine Tails there. Goes for the Snarl. That's a interesting. Interesting. Pick. Lowers. 
actually oh. throws the special attack of Glamora. You're right, now Glamora lacking the setup. It's gonna be a much less of a scary thing to consider. Now, there's, there's the Articuno. The Articuno. In the snow, doesn't have the Aurora Veil up this time. We have the Urshifu and the Chiyu in the back for Charles, so we'll have to see how he uses those. Yeah, Articuno has the odds stacked against him, but if he uses his moves correctly here, I think he might be able to eke out a win. But right now, he's down him on and in a really tough position. Charles is really looking to target that Raging Bolt there. That Raging Bolt puts a lot of pressure on his team, and I don't think he has an answer if he doesn't get rid of it now. Yeah, Charles has a lot of answers for this Articuno, but none for Raging Bolt, really. It's gonna be a tough pick here. Goes to the double protect, trying to... There's eight a out the snow. I think this is gonna be Terra Ice on Articuno, because Articuno is gonna wanna do a ton of damage. It is. The thing is, even though that power up has been used up by Meteor Beam, you still don't wanna get hit by Meteor Beam. Definitely, that Meteor Beam is gonna be very, very tough against this Articuno. Double Protect comes out. Do you think Jeffrey may have, may have anticipated this? Gone for a setup move? I don't yeah. quite think so. Could be a possibility though. No, the Blizzard comes There's out. There's the Blizzard. So he's now choiced into that Blizzard. He will be constantly using Blizzard. And it's going to be good against this Tornadus, but it's the rest of his team. I don't know how well this Blizzard's going to shake up. Yeah, that is the question here. Blocked out by both. Now, what does this Raging Bolt do? I think it used a Snarl as well. Got blocked out once again. Yeah, I mean, really, if you keep Snarling this, Glamora can't do anything. Glamora's already at just regular. We're going for the Terra Steel Icy Wind. I don't hate that. You really want to try and protect that Tornadus in case Ogre Pond is in the back. But, yeah, we're going to start seeing that Blizzard Spam. Oh, a Terra coming out on the side of Charles. Yeah. See that Terra Steel Tornadus here. Interesting, interesting. To see what he does with this. This is more of a defensive coverage here. There's an icy wind. Really not doing much, but lowering the speed stat of both the opposing Pokemon. Yeah, that really did nothing to Raging Bolt. No. Raging Bolt, very defensive, can take quite a few hits. Earth really power, just though. eats that Earth Power. There's the Blizzard. And that's just gonna be where we see the damage come out. Oh! Glamora lives! Glamora lives, but it's not gonna live the Snarl. Glamora goes down, Tornadus is on 29. Tornadus not in a good position here, Tailwind's about to drop. And now... We got the Chiyu and the Urshifu though. Yeah, the Urshifu at this point should be faster than both Pokemon with that Icy Wind and the Tailwind. The question is, does it one-shot Articuno? That is the question. One more turn of Tailwind. Articuno can't protect. It is locked into Blizzard. This is Urshifu is going to detect and let the let its Tailwind go down. Maybe I don't. I feel like know. if you're Urshifu, you have to put pressure on this turn. Maybe, Maybe you try and bait out the snow, which makes sense, but I have no idea. This is a very intense match. There's so many moving parts to consider, and both players are. Towing the line right now. They're dead even, but it looks like this might swing the way of Charles. If this detect is worth it, let's see. He protected himself. The double protect comes out once again. There's a thunderclap, and it fails. And now the blizzard. Blizzard also fails because of protect. There it is. Okay, this is the runs. interesting thing about the. Uh, what is it? About this raging bolt here. This Raging Bolt doesn't have Thunderbolt. Oh. It is purely, it has got Electro Web, it's got Draco Meteor, it's got Thunderclap and Snarl. So it does not have that Thunderbolt. It doesn't have a strong, regular electric type move. So it could be pretty easy to play around it for the Tornadus. Yeah, this is very, a very tough scenario. But I think Jeffrey is just in the leading position right now, Tornadus. Not looking too good in this Chi Yu. You might be able to do some work once it gets out here. Sucker Punch comes out in the Raging Bolt. There's another Tailwind set up by Thunderous right before he dies. Tornadoes. There's the Blizzard. It is what does it, it do? It's gonna kill that Tornado. Oh, Urshifu lives because it has the choice. It has focus. that Focus Band. Focus Ash. 
Wow, wow. <laughs> this Articuno is unstoppable right now. No one is able to take it down. It's all just come down to this Chi Yu and this Urshifu. Electro Web will take out Urshifu. I stand corrected. It's all it down to Chi Yu. It is just Chi Yu left. He has three Pokemon. We haven't even seen the last one in store. We have not, but here's the interesting thing. Snow is gone now. That... Oh. So, Blizzard is not 100% accurate. I wouldn't be shocked if we see Articuno leave here. And Articuno dungeon. really doesn't have a position now. It really needs to switch out, get rid of its choice band. It's not. It's going to stay in. See, and there's the heat wave. Heat wave. There it is. Gets the double. Gets the knockout. Does not get the double. Raging Bolt hangs up. It gets the burn. burn. That is a game winning burn right there. Turning this into a 3v1 into a 1v1. Does that Raging Bolt get the knockout? It needs to get the knockout here. It but does. It gets the burn. Raging Bolt is gone. You what through. is left? This is it. If this last Mon is weak to Chi Yu. It is Ogre Pond. But this is Water Ogre Pond. This is disastrous for the Chi Yu. Locked into Heat Wave here. Ogre Pond's going to Ivy Cudgel. It is the question of what goes first. Heat Wave gets the knockout! There it is! The Tailwind from earlier made sure the Chi Yu can go first. And now we're going to our first game three. Charles defeating Jeff in game two. What a match. What a comeback there. That Chi Yu did so much damage. That burn, I think, mattered. Of course it mattered. If he was up there, he would have done another priority move. Maybe he didn't, but it could have. That could have created, it could have put him in a very bad spot. Can it? I don't think it can paralyze. No, it can't. If Thunderclap can't paralyze, but it yes. could have done a ton of damage. Well, he would have gotten that one off. If he didn't burn, he would have lived again, done it again. Yeah. Uh, it would have been a risky situation if there was a crit in there somewhere. It would have been it would have been very intense. So now the question is, what do you do now? What do you change up? What do you go for it into this first game three of the day for us here on the stream? I think I think Jeffrey wants to go back to something typical because Charles actually does have a lot that can cover these ice types. He has Glamora, he has uh, the Chi Yu, he has Urshifu, he has three Pokemon on his team that are able to go toe to toe with these ice types and just take them down to nothing, melt them completely. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know what you play here, I don't know what you want here. There's so many different things, there's so many different pieces. I mean, you saw that Glimora really wasn't useful against that Raging Bolt, against the Ninetales and Articuno. I, so do you leave Glamora at home? I think the problem is he's leading Glamora because he wants to try and get this toxic debris off, right? You want to get the up as early as you can. But the white, uh, the power herb meteor beam could just be so clutch to take out that Articuno when you needed to. It could, but he's had to sp he has to burn that power herb a little bit earlier and then he took the snarl and then it and then it went down, it was really not as effective as it could have been. I think if he holds the Glamora, maybe as a third pick, it could work out a lot better for him. We could, we could. I think we're getting ready to jump into the next match here. But really, the Alola Ninetales also didn't do a lot. It went down pretty quickly. I'd be shocked if we don't see Articuno this time. Yeah, maybe another Articuno. Articuno was strong, but it really didn't win him the game there. It really was not doing enough damage because it wasn't effective against anything. So I think you're right. As we go in to this game three. Ninetales Raging Bolt against the same leads we had last time. How will this change up this time? Let's see. I think we're going to see a Snarl once again coming out. Try and cancel out, cancel out this Meteor Beam from the Glamora. The question is, do you set up the Aurora Veil now? Because you know you died a Meteor Beam. Do you set up the Aurora Veil to have it? That's the question. I think Alola Ninetales will go first if it wants to set up Aurora, Aurora Veil. There's the Tailwind. There's the Tailwind. Go. Let's see. Meteor there's Beam gets beam. out. And no Focus Sash on this. No Focus Sash. So Alola Ninetales will most likely go down here. I actually think with that Tailwind, Glamora is faster. There it is. And that's going to be a one shot right there. And Jeffrey off to a rough start. And Charles really perfecting his opening here. Yeah, there's the snarl, though. Again, negating the fact of that Meteor Beam. The Meteor, De Meteor Beam did its job. It got rid of the Alola Ninetales before it could set up Aurora Veil. But really, that Glamour is now in a bad position. Glamour did its job, though. It got its pick. And now it's just going to try and sit around here, do something useful 
but I think we might see a swap out come out from Glamour, because yeah. unless you commit to this two-turn Meteor Beam to try and take out this Articuno, it's not going to be a great game going forward. No, you have the Tailwind up, you have the time now, but you're going to protect, double protect, try and burn the snow, but also burn your Tailwind. Yeah, I try out the snow maybe it's just trying to keep this up maybe just have another tailwind at a later date here we are two turns committed maybe jeffrey sees this once again no he's there's the blizzard his choice into it now now what does this guy do here on the raging bolt side it's gonna be probably another snarl yeah there it is trying to just make <laughs> these mons up right now as useless as he can but the Protect comes through, stats soon get lowered, we're right back to where we once were. Now, seeing Tailwind, two more turns. Two turns of Tailwind, I believe there's three more turns of Snow. Icy Go for the wind. Icy Wind, try and lower those speed stats again. It's really trying to win the speed battle here, but... Earth Power into the Raging Bolt. We know the Earth Power didn't do a lot of damage last time, so it I'm shocked they're trying it again. I think he's just trying to run the exact same thing that got him to win in the end, but I don't think he can bank on that every single time, but I could stand corrected. And neither There's the Earth Power. It does a decent bit, but not enough. Not what it should be doing. Tornadus goes down this time. And that's going to be very tough for Charles. Thought Tornadus was a big piece. There's the Snarl. He's going to hit the Glamora. The Glamora, Glamora lives! lives. Glamour lives on six, but it is at that minus one special attack that Chi Yu is coming out. Do you want this Glamour up, though? Because it's kind of a sitting duck right now. It's not really able to give any buff to your team in any way. Sure, it could do another move or two, but it's not going to be hitting that hard with two special attack debuffs. Yeah, one important thing to know is that Articuno does have Snow Veil or Snow Cloak up here. There's a chance this Heat Wave misses. It is only a 95% accurate move. Chance to miss is there. Will it miss? Possibly. Who's to say? Will this Articuno still live? I do not know. I think we're seeing a Terra come out here. I see that communicating symbol. I know what that means. We're going to see a Terra come out from Jeffrey Yang. It's going to be a big one. I don't know who it's on. Who would you guess? I think you Terra Fairy, the Raging Bolt here. Unless they may... No, there's no Terra. No, no. it was just... Taking a little while. Articuno does not live. Raging Bolt lives, though. Articuno falls. That's a big thorn in Jeffrey's side. Now, one more Earth, Earth power. power. That oh. should do it. The Earth Power, even with minus one, picks up the knockout there. And now, Jeffrey is down to his last Mon. It's a 3v1 situation. If you're Jeffrey, you got to have a God tier Ogre Pawn play here. Oh, hey. I would be shocked if we don't see the Terra Ghost Heat Wave. We are not seeing the Terra Ghost Heat Wave. I think. What do you do here, as Charles? You're it in a very a, good position. But yeah, it is still a 3v1 here. Really, Glamora does not have much health, but it is enough health. There's the Terra Ghost into the Heat Wave. There it is. Nope. Oh, he's thinking about it. He's Switching it over Pawn. It's just interesting. Maybe he just wants to get as much damage as he can on this enemy Ogre Pawn, hoping this Ogre Pawn chooses to go for a, a spiky shield? Yeah, you probably see, you probably see, I feel like if you're Jeffrey, you have to play very offensive here. I don't think, we have to be. Oh, that is true. There's the spiky shield. No, there it is. He's burning the spiky shield. One important thing to know here that I did forget is that Ogre Pond Water's other ability is uh, Water Absorb. So it can't Ivy Cudgel into that Chi Yu. That's probably why he didn't. This Glamora also can't Spiky Shield anymore as it just used it twice in a row and failed. Not... And this Glamora is not hitting very hard. This Glamora is pretty weak. It's got minus one. It'll still deal damage, but it won't deal as much damage as it would like to do. I think he just wants this Glamora out of here as soon as he can so he can get this Chi up and out and swing in. Spiky Shield. The Ivy Cudgel and on the Ogre Pond is forcing him to attack this. Horn Leech into the, into the Glamora, get a little bit of health back just in case that Ogre Pond did something. Spikes are down, but it's not going to amount to much at this point in the game. Yeah, there's no switching anymore. It is a straight 2v1. 
it is a 2v1 ditto, I must add. Ogre, Ogre Pond v Ogre Pond. And Chiyu is going to be the one to break that tie. And I think going for the follow me into the Terra Ghost Dark Pulse. Interesting. Interesting. Well, My guess is he is predicting the Terra from the from the Ogre Pond there. So we might as well go for Stab Dark if it's going to Terra. There is the Terra. There it is. All right, let's see it. It's going to be Terra Water. Terra oh, Ghost Chiyu. Terra Ghost. It's Chiyu this time. Yep. Well, we see the Terra Water. I do not think that Jeffrey has Terra this game. Don't think he has either. He's not going to. He's going to Spiky Shield instead. He's going to live one more turn. It's the follow me. But I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know how Jeffrey gets out of this one. It is a hard battle. It's not impossible, but it is doable. He now knows that that Chiyu is locked into Dark Pulse. Let's see if the Will Dark Pulse There's ends. the Terra. There it is. All right. Let's see what Jeffrey and his Ogre Pond can do. This yeah. game has been won. And this game today has been won and lost on Ogre Pond plays. If Jeffrey can get a very clutch play in here. He might be we able do to get that special defense boost. There it is. Which could be crucial here. There's the follow me. Will the Horn Leech do enough damage? Let's see. There's the Horn Leech. Oh, Can't it do does much nothing. There's the Dark There's Pulse. There's the Dark Pulse. It does have. That's too much. But I think that might have been a very too close to a kill if not for that Terra right there. Horn Leech, Dark Pulse. This could be the game for Charles, unless there's the Spiky Shield. It's going to do a little bit of damage on the other enemy Ogre Pond. All right, Dark Pulse miss. That Ogre Pond, though, is going to take some chip damage from that Spiky Shield. Let's see. I don't think this Ogre Pond is very weak at all, though, so it's not going to amount to too much. Gets it down to below half. It's within kill range. Pond doesn't have any spread moves, unfortunately. And the water absorb on the Chi Yu, it's one super effective move. Not gonna be much use. If you're Jeffrey, you've gotta be playing out of your mind here to figure out what to do. There's, There's the, the Horn Leech. Leech. On the Chi Yu. On the Chi Yu, doesn't get the knockout, which I think he was looking for. Now, it's very dicey here. The Dark, Dark Pulse, Pulse does not look the, the crit. crit. Hey, the crits have spoken, and that. It's the game going That's over the game to there. Charles Moses. And what a comeback. He lost the first game, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that was a really good comeback from Charles. Really took that first game, took that loss, and figured out how to change his strategy and what he needed to do to win game two and three. And... What that's a skill in and of itself. He really adapted, brought the correct team up against this Arctic Canoe after it just completely destroyed his team right there. But props to both players, they both played exceedingly well. And whew, what a nail biter! Yeah, what an incredible match! That match really could have gone any way there. Be exciting to see what these two players do going forward. I'm sure we will see them tomorrow and what they do to change up their teams a little bit going into tomorrow. Yeah, I'm excited to see the changes in tomorrow, but what a game for our first game three. That's what you like to see. You like to see kind of the reverse comeback situation. You lose game one, you really analyze your opponent, win one, and win again, bring it all the way home. Yeah, Charles did a great job really adapting his team to beat that Articuno. Really just locked down that Articuno, was able to get that icy win, get that, that snarl off, get rid of a little Ninetales, who's really strong. A little of Ninetales, if you can take it out before it can do anything it wants to do, really shuts down Articuno very quickly. Yeah, that Articuno was great in the first game, but I feel like Jeffrey maybe should have moved on, switched up a little bit more. I know his team has two months centered around that Articuno, but he has enough that he could have switched it out entirely, gone a whole totally different direction, and probably still found success. Yeah, I think if we see that Landorus Incarnate form in there, I think, honestly, Landorus probably had a better matchup there. But oh, there's the Chi Yu that Landorus would have had a great time. Yeah, against the Chi Yu, against really that Glamora, it does a ton of damage to. A lot of Pokemon there that Landorus does not want to see. But it's hard about what do you leave behind to bring in Landorus. Yeah, that's tough. Maybe the Ninetales, because I feel like you only want to bring the Ninetales if you want to bring the Articunos, and then bring in two different Mons. 
I don't know. There's a lot of things to consider. I'm so sure Jeffrey considered them, but nonetheless, Charles just adapted a little bit better, knew Jeffrey's game, play, game plan going in, and played accordingly. And that is what Pokemon's all about. It's about those knowledge checks, about knowing what your opponent's about to do and trying to predict accordingly. Yeah, and as we get ready to... Yeah, with round five coming up soon, this is going to be the really important battles for a lot of these top players. We know top cut is eight. There's 26 players here today. Wow. So only the top eight are going to make it to those final three rounds today. So who will be able to win ahead and get there today? Yeah, That's the question. And everybody is looking for those points today. There's 50 points up for grabs. You need 500, I believe, to qualify for Worlds. So every little bit counts. Everyone's here playing for those. And it is getting dicey. You know, you want to get those as much as you can. And you can tell everybody's playing their best shot. A lot of different teams are being brought up. A lot of experimentation is at play right now. But it's really paying off. I see the more experimental teams starting to win yeah. more and more. It'll be exciting. And listen, if you're not here in Windsor this weekend, what you can look forward to is the May long weekend. That's May 17th, 18th, 19th, and the 20th. We have four mid-season challenges all running at once. So if you're looking for those world points, we will have more info about that for you after these tournaments. So look out for that. Because if you want to be here, it's a great experience. We'd love to see more players out as we just start this Pokemon takeover here at St. Clair. Yeah, the community is so great. The vibes are so good out there. Everybody's happy, joking around, making so many new friends. It's great to see. I love the Pokemon community. But you know what? I also love, Eric? Our next round of Swiss. It's going to be very, very fun. It's going to be very, very good. We'll be right back after a quick break. <laughs> 